In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to our weekly online Mass from St. Patrick's Churchill for the 27th Sunday of the year. Our Gospel passage today is the parable of the unworthy tenants in the vineyard. As we gather to hear God's word to us and to share the body and blood of Jesus, we pause and ask pardon for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing to my friend the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, planted choice vines in it. In the middle he built a tower. He dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes but sour grapes was all that it gave. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I, could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well, I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on, knock down its wall for it to be trampled on. I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to rain no more on it, Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah, that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed. Integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. It stretched out its branches to the sea, to the great river, it stretched out its shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call on your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving, and that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, Fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything we love and honor, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learned from me and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vineyard time grew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arises. And Jesus said to them, have you never read the scripture? It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. 
This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and will be given to people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable which we have as our Gospel passage today represents basically a last desperate effort by Jesus to make the Jewish religious leaders realise their blindness and their lack of understanding. It's a parable about a vineyard and Jesus' as listeners would have understood immediately that it was a parable about the Jewish people, God's chosen people. Many times in the Old Testament writings, the Jewish people are referred to as God's vineyard. And our first reading today from the prophet Isaiah is an example of that. Isaiah uses the image of a vineyard to talk about the Jewish people. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So in the parable, the vineyard stands for the Jewish people. The owner of the vineyard is God, and he puts his vineyard in the care of tenants. And the tenants in the parable, the ones responsible for looking after the vineyard, are the Jewish religious leaders. In the parable, the landowner sends his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the servants get beaten up and killed. And the servants in the parable are meant to stand for the Old Testament prophets like Elijah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. When we use the word prophet, we generally think of someone who foretells the future. The Old Testament prophets did make prophecies about things that would happen in the future. But the main role or characteristic of the Old Testament prophets was that they were acting as messengers from God who called the Jewish people back to friendship with God after the people had drifted away. And because what they had to say wasn't a popular message, they were often made outcasts or beaten up or put to death. In the parable, the landowner finally sends his sons to the tenant, his son to the tenants, but they kill him too. And Jesus is saying to the Jewish religious leaders, that's me. I'm here among you as God's son, but you're going to reject me and kill me, the way the tenants in the story killed the landowner's son. So the parable is directed, firstly, at the Jewish religious leaders, but it also has some relevance for us. A question we could maybe ask is, who are the prophets in my life and how do I respond to them? Do I tune out and react negatively when people or events challenge my way of seeing things? Am I so fixed in my ways and my attitudes that I'm sometimes incapable of growing as a Christian and recognising what God is calling me to be? The Jewish religious leaders were very smug and very confident that they were close to God. They felt cosy the way they were. They didn't appreciate Jesus rocking their boat or rattling their cage. They tried to ignore him and then they tried to intimidate him. And when that didn't work, they had him put to death. All because they weren't open to being challenged in their attitudes and their ways of seeing things. Cardinal Newman, the great 19th century theologian and teacher, once wrote, in a higher world it is otherwise, but here below to live is to change and to be perfect is to have changed often. Today's parable is a parable about a group of people who were incapable 
of accepting God's call to them to change and to reevaluate their lives. It calls us to continually look into our hearts, at our attitudes, at our way of living, and to be always open to the question, in what ways might God be asking me to change, to see things differently, to do things differently? And how open and responsive am I to hearing that message? Let's join now in our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifice instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask, you, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, Give us life through your Son. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us ask our Father to forgive us our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Lamb of God, you take away our sins. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but let me say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God, bless us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.